Under a new map, China claims a lot of international territory that now belongs to Russia, India and also Southeast Asia. I want to break down for you why I believe that the BRICS collaboration will fail big time. So watch this whole video because I'm going to show you an article that's been published which confirms a lot of the stuff that we already know. It also really amplifies some things that we might have ignored in the past. And it will also show you why you should be careful investing in certain countries. Here's the article. If you go to economictimes.indiatimes.com, you can see headline says under new map, China claims a Russian island, but it also claims territory in other countries, including India too, which is not what India wants. And if you take a look at these countries now, right, if you are familiar with BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, you can see that these countries have not really had a long time of stick to itiveness, right? They haven't really been that loyal to each other for a very long time. And because of that, I just don't think that it will work. But just quoting some things out of this article here, where we can see that things are getting pretty weird pretty quickly. It says, quote, New Daily, in what could spark tensions between the two close allies, China, in its new standard map, has claimed an entire island in eastern Russia along the border of the two countries. And it talks about the island of Bolshoi Usursky. I'm probably not pronouncing it right, but you kind of get what I'm saying, right? And we've seen a lot of news now out of China, right? Especially not so pleasant news by the Chinese Communist Party, by China's Communist Party, where they just go into territories that they want to occupy, that party believes is part of the country, even though the country doesn't really have any substantial proof that that is actually the case. And all countries disagree with China. Vietnam disagrees with China's territory claims in Vietnam. The Philippines disagrees with China's territory claims in the South China Sea and also islands that belong to the Philippines. Malaysia disagrees with China's claims in their area, right? Geographic location. Uh, Russia disagrees. India disagrees. Everyone disagrees with China, but China believes yeah, certain parts of your territory are still ours. If we just take a look at the, I'm not sure how to call it, but it's an awkward relationship that China and Russia have because first of all, the two, they don't trust each other. Same goes with India and China. They don't trust each other. No matter what you might believe, India does not trust China. They have so many border disputes all the time. Take a look on YouTube, many videos. We got over the World War II stuff was a terrible time. We learned from that. It was an expensive lesson, right? Millions of people died and lots of poverty and lots of things happened. But if you take a look at North America and Europe, you can see that there's a certain level of trust there based on experience. America liberated us from the Nazis. It all happened, right? And so because of that, there's a certain level of trust. China is now taking this stance in the 21st century. They're not doing it like they did it in the old days, you know, with brutal military force. But they're doing it in a deceptive way and they're doing it in a geopolitical way that benefits China. But China also realizes that China's Communist Party is coming to an end. There was an article published a couple of weeks ago that China has lost, I believe, hundreds of millions or tens of millions of overseas supporters, right? Supporters that used to support China's Communist Party. But given what happened during COVID and given how the country handled it and how the people were treated inside China, they lost so much support from people overseas that even now Xi Jinping said the party is at risk. The party is of risk of collapsing, which is not a good statement to make by the country's top leader, top leadership. I don't believe the narrative that YouTubers or competitors are putting out there that BRICS and the East are on their way to success and the West is on the way down, right? Because that's the narrative they're giving you because they want to sell more services. Either they just want to sell more services or they just have no clue about geopolitics. I personally think it's a combination of the two. I personally believe that the people that are doing these videos, they have no idea about geopolitics and second, they're biased. They, they just don't have a clue. But if you just take a look at the history between India and China and China and Russia, I mean, they still don't trust each other. <laughs> they just don't trust each other. I mean, to be fair, we had that in Europe too, but we kind of moved on from that stage and we learned how to live in just peace, you know, 
peace, trust, and respect. With the CCP, you never know what you get. Here's another quote here. It says, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Wang Wenbin said publishing the map was, I'm going to quote this, a routine practice in China's exercise of sovereignty in accordance with the law. <laughs> what law? The law that China put out? America created the international law and structure that's in place now. And most countries have honored it with the exception of China and Russia. India has certainly honored it. So yeah, this whole narrative that's out there that the West's going down and America collapses, all that kind of stuff. I mean, we can see that China peaked, right? Look at their birth rates, look at their political system. People, not even their own people are in alignment with their political system anymore. And that's the biggest risk, right? If the people of the country are no longer willing to defend political system that they are part of, that's usually the beginning of the end. That's the beginning of the collapse of a communist country. You know, as long as you can bend people over, as long as you can force people into believing and doing what you want them to do, that's good. But if there's a point in time where the people start questioning the leadership of a country to the point where you lose hundreds of millions of people overseas and even local people, like the people with money in China, you know where they're sending their kids to? They're sending their kids to Australia and New Zealand. I'm not saying Australia is good, especially not after what happened during the pandemic. In fact, I recommend people not to go there. The Chinese, I mean, the rich ones, they're sending their people to Canada, America, New Zealand, Australia, Europe too. There are now already, I believe, hundreds of thousands of them living in Italy alone. And so they're getting out, right? The people with money in China, the people with an option to get out, they're gone. And if you cannot keep the top tier people in your country, then your country will fail anyway. In America, yes, yeah, some entrepreneurs have left, but most have stayed. You know, in China, the people that have cash, that are wealthy, influential, a lot of them go, you know, because they don't want to be part of that system, because they know how China is perceived on the international stage, which isn't anything to brag about. And so you have to understand that BRICS is just, um, it's been around for a long time, right? BRICS isn't something new, it's been around for a long time but now the media has caught on they always find a new narrative to push that will get us to pay more attention to the media you know that's where they're they've been talking about nuclear war they've been talking about bricks they've been talking about like all kinds of stuff like climate change right fear gets people moving right fear creates motion and motion creates emotion we all know what's going on at least the elite you're part of the elite because you're watching this channel we are the nomad elite we have a superior way of thinking. We don't go to countries where we have no civil and property rights. We don't go to countries that will eventually expel us, almost guarantee. What's the lesson here? What's the takeaway? First of all, first takeaway is for you not to listen to narrative pushers, people who want to make money online, who are pushing a bunch of narratives, self-serving benefits so they can sell more products and services, right? They're creating fear and with fear, they can get people to buy their products and services. It's basic human psychology. A lot of them, most of them have no clue about geopolitics, no freaking clue, willfully or unwillfully ignorant, doesn't matter, but they just don't have a clue. Then secondly, what's important is that go to a country where you are protected by the constitution. I'm stressing this. You want full reciprocity in civil and property rights. You want to own 100% of the land that you have, 100% of the house. You want to own 100% of the company that you have. You want to get real unconditional permanent residency and eventually become a citizen, right? If the country doesn't offer that, then you're not in the right boat. What are your thoughts on this topic? Would love to hear what you think. Put your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you for watching.